when we started the project, I was like, yeah, well, let's see, you know, we're Microsoft. Maybe, maybe we'll get like 25% of the community to take an interest or, or that, that would have been success. But to get to this point, I'm floored, you know, and our entire team is floored and, and, and super grateful, uh, obviously, you know, that our work is, is that relevant to that many people. There's nothing more satisfying than working on something that you know is making a difference. TypeScript from day one was self-hosted, right? Uh, and written in itself. And that meant that TypeScript, the compiler, the tool set, everything runs simply as a JavaScript app. Precisely because of this massive adoption and, and like the ever-growing size of projects that, that our users build, you know, scalability has just become the number one issue. As much as it pained us to, to give up on, on self-hosting, we also knew that we just could not bring any more performance. And so we experimented with different languages. We experimented with C-sharp, we experimented with, with a bunch of other stuff. We ended up choosing Go as the language to port to. We quickly realized we could get 10x. Half of it from being in native code and the other half of it from being able to take advantage of shared memory concurrency. You can't just like ignore 10x. Do you know what I mean? Hot damn, that changes everything. That makes things that took minutes instead take 10 seconds. You have to go with it, right? And we really have a compiler now in native code that functionally is a carbon copy of the old compiler. I mean, like down to the quirks. And that means the community doesn't have to throw it all away. Open source was a big experiment, right? And, and we're talking about like, like these issues of like, like no one's really figured out how to fund open source, yet there it is and it's bigger than ever, right? And, and, and it's not going away and, it's, and it just keeps on growing and there's more and more knowledge and ability that we're capturing in all of this code that, that's out there. There's a lot of noise too uh, and a lot of it isn't being maintained and whatever, but still it's like, it's like, it's evolution captured, you know, right there. And this notion now that we have, like, we've been on GitHub for 12 years. We have 12 years of history captured in there, right? Searchable. Like, if I know someone talked about, we, we did, there was an issue on this somewhere. Let, let's just find it. Now, the search could be better. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm sure AI hopefully will help on, on that too, right? But, but it's there. There's so much value there, you know, and, and, and I'm just, I'm so pleased that, that it continues to grow uh, and survive. I've had a lot of people ask me, oh, why don't you go design the perfect programming language for AI to target? AI's abilities in a particular writing code in a particular language is directly proportional to how much of that code it has seen. Because it is a big regurgitator, if you will, of stuff that someone has done with some extrapolation on, on top of it, right? And well, we, we know from the data, right, that AI has seen a lot of JavaScript and a lot of Python and a lot of TypeScript, and therefore it's pretty darn good at writing code in those languages. And so the best language for AI is the language that AI has seen a lot of, and that means you don't, <laughs> new programming languages are actually disadvantaged. We want a very deterministic outcome here. We want to port half a million lines of code and know that they do exactly what the old lines of code did. If you ask AI to translate them, it might hallucinate a little bit here and there and whatever, and now you gotta like go carefully examine every line of code. And so that's probably not the, the best way to do these massive ports. It might actually be better to ask AI to generate a program that helps you do the port because then when you run that program, you get a deterministic outcome. We have a whole bunch of pull requests that have happened in the old code base whilst we were building a new code base, like hundreds of them, that we need to get moved over. Now, we've actually been using AI fairly successfully to do that, right? Where you don't have to go in and, oh, God, not, because now there's, some, there's enough body that, that AI can look at, and AI's gotten good enough that we can automate some of that. AI started out being the assistant, but you were still in control, sitting in the IDE, and it was just aiding you in typing faster and completing stuff faster, right? But now it's switching around. The AI is doing the work, right? And, and you're supervising what it's doing. And, and it doesn't necessarily need an IDE in the same way that we need IDEs, right? It still needs the services. And that's why like all of this MCP stuff is becoming interesting and, and, and connecting language services to MCP and, and having giving AI the ability to ask semantic questions or, or refactoring questions or whatever and get sort of boxed in determinism around certain workflows, right? But still do sort of the equivalent of what you would do in an IDE, but do it the LLM way or the agent way. Um, that's going to change development tools dramatically.